In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. Chaplain's Report today, it uh, comes from the book of Ephesians. And it kind of goes back to the first story that we were talking about. Because I think that we have a real problem sometimes remembering who our enemies are. Sometimes we fool ourselves into thinking because we want peace, we don't want to struggle, we want to be friends with people. And I'm talking about this on both the physical and the spiritual sense, which will become evident when you look at what passage we're going to be looking at. It's very easy for us to be drawn into error and sin. Because we don't like struggling against it. And that's understandable. Nobody likes struggling against it. It's called a struggle for a reason. You don't like doing it. But sometimes our desire for peace, our desire to not fight, our desire to just, you know, be okay with everybody, blinds us to our actual task here on this earth. And in this passage in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God, so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now the reason that Paul is reminding them of this because you have to remember, per Christians were being persecuted at the time he's writing this letter to Ephesus. That was a terrible thing. And Christians being persecuted and being harmed or killed or imprisoned simply for believing in Jesus Christ and being unwilling to not confess him before others. That is a really horrible thing. But what Paul is saying here is, ultimately, you have to remember, the fight is not physical. The fight is not a war against an actual army or a nation. It's a spiritual battle. And I think a lot of Christians have been drawn in to a conflict without realizing that. We tend to think, I don't know how many people, and, and by the way, I've heard people on the left say it more recently. I've heard people on the right say it. Well, when are we going to just take up arms and, and take over? That's There are evil aspects of people within our country, within our communities, that would like nothing more than to see Christianity driven clean out of society. The way we're going to beat them is not with guns. The way we're going to beat them is not with combat, even in the rhetorical sense. Ultimately, our enemy is spiritual, not physical. And so let's be careful to not be drawn into a second error because of the first. Let's not be drawn into this false dichotomy where, oh, well, we really hate these guys and they hate us, so we need to do something that's immoral against them. We need to be drawn into this conflict and go after somebody else. No, that's not what we're taught to do. You see, as a Christian, and I'm not saying that there's never a time to use violence or fight. I, I've done lessons on that. Go look them up if you want to. That's not really the, the point of what I'm saying today. It is so easy for us to lose sight of who our enemy is. And most of the time, the enemy is ourself. You notice, in the book of David, for example, who was David's greatest adversary? Saul? No. I mean, Saul did some horrible things to him, don't get me wrong. But David's biggest struggle, his biggest failings, didn't come at the hand of Saul. 
Sure, he had to kind of roam around like a vagabond for a few years, which was definitely not ideal. Was it Absalom, his own son? No. Absalom, horrible and corrupt as he is, he was really only kind of a thorn in David's side for a little while, and then David retook his throne. And David was, at least to what we know about it, never in any real danger from either one of them because God looked after him and protected him. To our knowledge, he never had an actual physical confrontation with either one. Now, other people did on his behalf. One of his men, of course, killed Absalom, beheaded him. But ultimately, the greatest struggle of David's life was against himself against his own failings, his own desires and lust. Absalom was the result of him coddling his son and not being a good father the way that he knew he should have been. And was also part of the punishment of his sin with Bathsheba. You see, David's an amazing individual that overcame a lot, but what's most important about his story is that he overcame his own demons. Of course, he had to do it with God's help. But ultimately, that's the struggle that we need to focus on. It's not about who wins the next election. It's not about what country is the most dominant in the military. And I'm not saying that these things aren't important. Obviously, I'm in a business that cares a great deal about those things. I'm just saying that we have to remember that our true struggle is against darkness, against evil, against temptations inside ourself. That is the greatest struggle of this life. And it is one that we can only win once we have put on Christ in baptism and dedicated our lives to following in his footsteps. I'm not saying other things don't matter, but ultimately that is the only thing that is going to matter in the end. Stay the course, friends. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell, and if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.